Okay, hey folks, uh, we're back on the trail again for a little project with SMU. This is Mike Ford, and I'm here with Reggie Dupard, uh, who had the, the grace to come out and meet with us at Bass Pro Shops at Embassy Suites in uh, Grapevine, Texas. I'm at a deer function. I raise white-tailed deer for a living, and we've had a sale here today, and Reggie come out and hung out with us and, and visited and talked. Lance McElhaney was out and visited and talked with us. It's great mm -hmm. to see you guys. Thank you for taking the time, Reggie. This is a, a fun project for me, maybe as much fun as anything I've ever been involved with at SMU, mainly because I'm getting to go touch base with some of the old guys. If my memory holds me true, you ended up number two all-time leading rusher at SMU behind right. Eric. Right. And I think either number three, right. number three all-time in the Southwest Conference behind Eric Dickerson, Earl Campbell. This gentleman was the third leading rusher in 115 years of football history in the Southwest Conference. My pleasure to be here, and Reggie, really what we're about, and, and when I contacted you a week or two ago, and, and you told me your story about, about right. you know, leaving him, you got drafted first round, went to the New England Patriots, and, and played five, six years of pro ball, and, and you, you were, were beat up a little bit, and you were just really tired of, of pushing it that hard, you retired, right. and uh, you'd made a great living, and you went out on the motivational speaking tour, if, I, if my memory's correct. Well, well I, I, motivational, I do some Christian speaking. I have a nonprofit organization my wife and I started. And so I, I like giving back to young people and try to tell them about their mistakes. You know, you and I made some mistakes. <laughs> and, and so I was, I'm fortunate enough to have played the game at the highest level. And when you play the game, young people listen to you. And so yep. that's my avenue to get to the get to their ear. And then, of course, I tell them later about the things that I think they need most. Right. the education. And the education was a large part of it. And sure. Reggie shared something with me a couple of weeks ago on the telephone when we were setting this up that he had a young student at one of his, his uh, speaking engagements ask him, literally, what did he say about well, when well, did you graduate? Well, said, or? You know, because I always talk about, you know, you have to get your education because without your education, you economically, you'll be at a disadvantage. You're, you're, you're behind. Exactly. And so he said, the young man came to me and said, well, how can you tell us about graduating and you didn't really get yours? And so that's basically, in essence, what he was saying. And, and I got the message real clear. And it was, the message come back to you it, it tenfold. Did. And it, it, make, it made it clear. And it mm -hmm. let me know that I need to be an example to not only young people out there that's athletes, but my kids. Your it's, own children. It's a legacy. Sure, absolutely. So the, the standard needs to be set. My dad had a third grade education. Why? Right. And so he always wanted me to finish my college degree. Finish what you started. And I was fortunate and blessed enough that he can see me graduate, which he did. He's no longer with us, but he did see me he graduate. He was there for that. Oh, Oh, man, it was wonderful. And that will never leave this part right <laughs> here. Um, it, it, huh? It's a lifelong thing. What we're out trying to tell the kids today is we all don't get to play football at the level we played in the old days at SMU. These guys were number one draft choices. Reggie was, had a great cure. Mm -hmm. I never played with Reggie, but when I was playing pro ball and I was back at SMU working out in the offseason, it's when he was toting the mail over there as well as anybody had ever done it. And my goodness gracious, what a career. But just the, just the part of, of really buckling down, and, and my message to the students back at the Hilltop or it is this, that you're here, you're in school, don't leave like Reggie did for six or eight years and mm -hmm. some kid ask you, well, what'd you get your degree in? And that spurs you up to go back to school. I'm 30 years after the fact of when I should have graduated and for some circumstances that maybe I had control of, maybe I didn't, uh, out of the blessing of the good Lord, I bumped into Dr. Turner and asked him about going back to school, and here I am, and trying to do whatever I can to fulfill that. But uh, it's a pleasure for me and for guys like you to take the time and, and come share the message with these kids. Um, you may rush for 3,000 yards in one year, but you know what, two years from now, if you don't have nothing to fall back on, that, that stuff starts to be history, don't it? Exactly, and, and I, I just want to thank you for giving me this opportunity and, and just thank the the SMU brass, the, the Dr. Turner's, at the time it was Jim Copeland, another right. young man, um, assistant athletic director was Carlton Cooper. Yeah, Carlton's a great guy. He was instrumental and, and motivating me. And so without those guys, we couldn't be doing what we're doing now. Absolutely. You were able to go finish up. And so we all sometimes need a little system. And so what you're doing, I think, is going to encourage other young people to finish their degree and hopefully take it more serious. You know, uh, I think we all enjoy college days in life, but the seriousness part of it, mm -hmm. you know, my, my serious part was down at OMB Stadium. Right. When I look back on it now, I wish I could have found a way to find that dividing line that yeah. half of my serious business would have been in Dallas Hall right. and half of it been in OMB Stadium. And I'm very blessed. I've got friends like this all over the world. I get to hunt and fish and travel the world. I've got a beautiful wife mm -hmm. that likes to do those things with me. Uh, I only wonder truly what I could have accomplished if I'd have gotten that degree 25 years ago. 
but I hadn't quit. I'm still chasing that race, and I'm going to finish it this time. Reggie, I appreciate your time all the way from New Orleans, Louisiana. I want to go down and eat some that Cajun cuisine with you sometime, little brother. You're always welcome. Thank you. Uh, this is part of a project that I'm doing for uh, SMU, uh, something I'm very proud of, quite honestly, and I've traveled literally all over the country. Got to spend a day with Eric out in California a month or so ago, and have met with Reggie Dupard and, and Lance McElhaney and several others, and thank you for coming out. And, and, and really what I'm doing, Mike, is is something uh, that I'm gonna make a presentation to the students on. Not only our times on the football field and in the locker room and in the weight room and working out, but mm -hmm. our time in the classroom. And and, and I know we were, we were having lunch earlier over at Camp Easy's and, and we were talking about the silver medal you won in the Olympics, right. the world championship ring that you've got on your big pole there. <laughs> and then in that same trophy room, you have your diploma hanging right there and you're just as proud as that accomplishment as anything you did on the field. Tell us about that. Well, exactly. You know. When you're an athlete, first of all, you're a student athlete. Yes, so you come to school to learn and get a degree and grow up as a, from a young man to an adult. And the main reason why you're here is to get an education. Yes, sir. So wow, what brought us here, brought us here was football, track and field, Our golf, tennis, on the field. everything we did outside the classroom on the athletic field allowed us to come here and get an education. Yeah. And the main thing you want to walk away from you leave school is to have your education, have the diploma that you did spend time here in the classroom and, and got your grade and you got the education. That's something you'll always have. They can't take that away from you. Exactly. That's one thing you cannot or anyone. And as old as we get, you've had double knee replacement and double hip replacement, but you haven't had to replace that diploma yeah. yet. Not at all. You still got it. It's mine. I know growing up, my, my mother, father, they all we got the diplomas. And being the first one of following my siblings, that it was expected of me to go on to college and get my degree. What what the thought? It was it was, it was gonna expected. Happen. It was expected. So I was the first one to go to college and got my degree and then my three after me. Brothers and sisters, they all had their degree. How about that? Mm -hmm. How about that? And how many children do you have now, Mike? Currently have two uh, three kids and uh, two have graduated from college. From college. And one more, he's a junior this year in college. In college, yes. That's a uh, Incredible, incredible uh, statement for the, the dedication you got out of the influence your parents had on you about having a degree and you expected to get a degree. You got your degree while you were here. You tore your knee up what year? Um, 1981. 1981. I was a rookie in the National Football League then. You tore your knee up, you redshirted a year, and literally that gave you a, an extra window of opportunity to finish that degree before you ever left school. Exactly, because once you left, leave school, it's pretty tough. Mentally and physically, to get back into classwork, especially when you're out in the job world, in the real world, yeah. and you want to, don't have to come back to get your degree. You want to get it while you, you know, in, have your time in, in and school. around. You know, really, that's our message today. You just heard of a world champion athlete, a world champion uh, shot put thrower, and still the national high school record holder, I believe, for shot. 32 years. At 32 years. There's not many of those records left, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Eric Dickerson. I don't have to introduce him. He speaks for himself. <laughs> Big Dick, thank you for having me. I'm a big fella. Great welcome. to see you. Um, Eric's a lot like me in, in a way that the, the common denominator, I'm not quite as fast as he is. Don't take me wrong in being like like that. But we both left school before we finished our degrees. I went on to play barely in the NFL for three or four years. He ended up being, what, number two? That one I would tell all time. Number two. Number two all time leading rusher in the National Football League when he was through with his days. And uh, I'm here to visit with him about the things that would have made a difference in his life and something in visiting with you on the phone just last week. Uh, your mother and your grandmother both, it, they begged you to, to get your degree and to stay in school and to, to get that part of your life behind you. And I went back 25 years after the fact. He's even a little further behind me <laughs> to say that it's something that's still on our mind. Yes, it is, folks, because here we are. But, but Eric, thanks for having us. And uh, my wife and I spent the day with you and your, your family. We've got a beautiful home out here. I'm so proud Thank of you. To, Thank to, you. When I tell the boys back home where I hunt and fish that I know Eric Dickerson, they say, yeah, <laughs> right, you know Eric Dickerson. I know you pretty well. I uh, Thank you for having us. And, and just really, what, what do you think comes from your heart about the things you could have done differently, not necessarily on the football field. I don't know that you could have done that any better, but the things that uh, about school and your education and your degree about how you wished you had stayed in school and completed that. Well, when I think about uh, college, you know, I think about, um, 
you know, all the opportunities that I had to go to colleges, all the colleges I could have went to, and, and I chose SMU, and I'm I'm very happy that I chose SMU. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I would say that Viola chose, Viola Dickinson chose that university for me, and that was the <laughs> best decision that she ever made. But uh, one thing is that my mother always wanted was me to, to finish college. Uh, she said, Eric, I want you to go back and get your degree. Uh, because uh, she said, you know, when I came up, uh, you know, we really couldn't stay in school. I mean, because she was my great, great aunt. So she was, uh, she was uh, born in 1904. So yeah. it, was, it was a little yeah. different back in those days. Well, they didn't have the opportunities. They didn't have the opportunity, had. right. Yeah. But she was, she was a really smart woman, uh, valedictorian in the class at that time. Didn't have a chance to go to college. And so she was really big on books and going to school. And, you know, when I, when I finally got into my, I, I remember my freshman year, um, I was going out a little bit, party. me and my friend Charles. <laughs> First time in the big yeah, city, yeah, huh? Me and Charles Drayton, you know, we wanted to party a little bit and, and got, the, got the letter, you know, it, it, you know, they sent home, it's our sad duty to inform you that you've been expelled from the university. <laughs> <laughs> she got that letter, she said, what the heck is this? Yeah. You know, you and that Charles Drayton? And she said, I'm going to take She's that letter. Skin oh, here, oh man, my God. She? So I called him, I said, man, you get the letter? He said, man, I got the letter too, man. <laughs> so we decided to go to, to, go to, had to go to summer school and stuff. And her big thing was, look, son, she said, you know, you're playing football and these sports, you say, that's, that's great and everything, but you know, you're not gonna be a young man forever. And I think that's one thing that we don't realize as young men and young women, is that we're not gonna be young forever if you're playing sports. That's something that won't last forever. One thing that lasts forever is this, you know, yeah. I, I can say for sure, when, when, when my mother passed away, she was 92 years old, she said, she said, only if I had another body. Cause she had, she had, a, great Still mind, had a great mind, great mind, smart, could write, read and everything. But, you know, says, I need another body. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that mine is, like it says, it's, it's a terrible thing to waste. And yeah. do I regret it? Yes, I regret not going back. Cause she used to stay on me. After my first year in the league, uh, I would go back to Texas. I'd go back to Sealy. I built a house in Sealy. And she tried to get me to, hey, why don't you go, and go to school? Let's go to school while you're here. I'm like, okay, mom, you know, and I'd call. And, 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 and uh, they said, I'm going to call back. And I never did. Yeah. And, you know, and do I regret it most definitely? Because I think that's a big part of anything. And it's hard to to tell someone to stay in school and get your education when you didn't finish yours. I mean, yeah. they, I think they're like, well, you didn't finish yours. You know, what are you doing telling me that? Why are you telling me that? But it's just not true. I mean, my circumstances, thank God, were a little bit different. I mean, I played professional football. I've been blessed. So any, any college student or any thank God that thinks he's going to play professional football, baseball, basketball, any of that, it's so good to get that, get that degree because, I mean, I really, I do, I can honestly say I regret it. And the education you're getting on a scholarship, I mean, I think take full advantage of it because I'm telling you from experience, and like I say, I've done everything, been everywhere, and that's one thing I can honestly say in my life, I, I do kind of regret. I have to, not even kind of regret, I do regret. Yeah. Because I feel like I, I let Viola down in that area where she said, hey, I want you to get your degree. I mean, and she would say it to me so much. I mean, I can still hear her saying it. And I mean, over and over. over. And, and no over. matter what, no matter what I did, the records I broke, you Rookie know, of the year, player of the year, year all-time all late rusher. All-time rushing in the league, all that. She said you know? books. She said, like that's she said, get them books. You know, get, <laughs> get those books, and I think it's important for, for all young men. I keep saying men and women. I mean, because women play sports too. Absolutely. It's the same thing. If you have an opportunity to get that degree, I mean, get it, and you can be proud of it. Because, Absolutely. I mean, it is a lot of hard work. I mean, playing, Mike, as you know, playing football and playing sports, it's a lot of hard work. It's stumbling blocks along the way. It really is. I mean, stumbling blocks for me when I played, you know, high school, college, college pro, and pro. I mean, you look back at, at my SMU days. It wasn't a smooth sail the no, whole sir. time. It no, was sir. not. I mean, people. When you look back at your life and you think, "Wow, you know, these are my struggles," but look where I'm at now. Look what I've accomplished. Look, look what I've accomplished in my life. So, um, you know, that's you know, that's what I'd have to say to any young man, woman. You know, to most definitely just. You know, really, really concentrate on your books because, like, you know, this brain, it goes nowhere. I can, I can honestly tell you, my body, once upon a time, it was no one faster than me. Nobody. I felt it. I mean, I, I would get out there and I'm like, you want to race? As a matter of fact, I'll give you a story. I was here in L.A. I came to L.A. played with the Rams, and my rookie year, we had a club, we had a club, and, and these guys you noticed know, some of us players in there, and he was like, you Eric Dixon, aren't you? I said, I said, yeah. He said, man, you're pretty tall. I'm, I'm like, yeah. He said. But you ain't that fast, man. I seen you run on TV. <laughs> I said, Doc, I said, I want that TV fool you. He said, and people come outside. I'm, I'm going to race him. I'm going yeah, to take, right take my shoes. Because I'm proud. Like, yeah, take my yeah. shoes off, roll my pants, legs up. You know, give me a jump. I'm like, no, you see, you're not running me, so I ain't give you no jump. Okay, well, give me a step. I said, I'll give you one step. So we raced. Man, I 
blew him out the water. He like, man, he don't look that fast on TV. I said, that's TV. But to, I'm saying this, saying that to say this, is that that was then, this is now. Now I'm an older guy. Can I do that anymore? Absolutely not. No. This goes to show you that my body is, I'm, I'm not that guy anymore. Mm. I can't go out and I'd run anyone anymore. Those days, those days are, are long behind me. But, you know, having a good, good mind, a good education, it's no, it's no substitute for it. Well, there's no doubt you're an educated man. You've had a great, successful career. You've got a beautiful, beautiful home out here in Malibu. And, and I, I, I don't know that a degree from SMU or any other university would have, have truly had a factor on your well-being and your, your stability of life. But that's, that's something to fall back on that I know Viola, even in heaven today, would be looking down on with pride. And it's something for me that it's a race that I started that I never got to complete. And I have a chance to complete it now. And that's one of the reasons that I'm out here and I'm gonna do everything that this guy here is capable of doing, if the good Lord will let me, and spur you up like I did when he was 18 <laughs> years old and said, I wanna run with you for the rest of my life somehow as a friend. And I mean that, I really do. All right, no Big problem, fella, no problem, man. Appreciate your time. Thank you, bro.